Welcome to the house of unwashed it washing washy mess. We have another repair, and I have cracked it open. And this one we might not get 100%, and you shall see why. But I'll give you some hints. Are you seeing the hints? There's something missing on the back that should be there. Oh no, I think we know what's inside. So we'll pop the back off and just so you know, this is a Commodore CBM, which stands for Commodore Business Machines. It was the branding they went by in the UK in the 80s. I don't know why. I don't know why. And it's an SR36 scientific algebraic calculator. So this time we have no fun reverse Polish notation shenanigans to play with. But he comes apart really easy, you know. Pretty standard, has your standard functions. Doesn't seem to be a scientific calculator filled with loads of useless functions. Such as most modern ones. You know, you haven't got, like, low, you, you've you got functions you're actually going to use. There are some functions in scientific calculators that, that just seem to be there for textbooks and nothing else. <laughs> yes, because textbooks are really important. So we pop off the back. And, well, I'll bring you up for a close-up reveal. Because I was pretty happy when I opened this. Do, 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 do. Zelda chest opening sound. And we have ceramic gold plated pinned ICs. And two of them. And there's some shenanigans underneath. And this is about as far as I've gone really. But we also have our lovely, grotty, disgusting, rotted NICAD batteries. Ugh, they're horrible things. Shall we burn them? Hmm. We should microwave them. Yes, the Ephraim 9 has a microwave in the shed that he found at the side of the road. Yeah, maybe we'll put them onto one side to microwave them and see what happens when you microwave almost 50 year old nightcap batteries. <laughs> Uh, somehow the foam has not disintegrated to nothing. Usually foam this old, you touch it and it just crumbles away. Nothing really much. There's a power charge port. Wires falling out because, well... Yeah, um... NICAB batteries, you know. Ah, oh, okay. No. <laughs> no. This cable's so rooted, it won't even strip. There we go. Oh yeah, it's got the classic um, NICAD uh, battery grot on there that makes the salt cable basically useless. Oh god, yeah. This end isn't so bad. But yeah, if you look, you can see that one end has gone black, and I can tell you for experience... That will not take solder. Because there's always a positive end that leaks, because that's where the seals are. We'll actually take apart the battery pack, because it seems to be comprised of four smaller cells. And what we have here is basically our two main ICs, what look to be display drivers from the, um, which look like the exact same type used in the uh, Sinclair Cambridge calculator. And we can verify that, because those of you who have... Um, Watch that video. No, I have, well, a Sinclair Cambridge calculator that we restored and got working. And it's made in England, but you wouldn't think that by the quality of it. The quality is absolutely terrible, especially this battery compartment. I mean, what the hell is that? What the hell is that, Sir Clive? I know you're trying to make them as cheap as possible, but this, seriously... Oh, no wonder Sinclair's the butt of so many jokes. <laughs> yes, ITT um, 1705. 
ITT, yeah, these are a different variant, but they're going to be display drivers, and they go up to the display multiplexer. So yeah, they're, mul they're display multiplexers, and probably because there's a lot more elements in that. But yeah, there's a look inside the Sinclair one. And even has a very similar chipset to the Royal Digital. This one has one manufactured by Moss Semiconductor. <clears throat> Don't you dare fall apart. I mean the button. <laughs> They're not as terrible as the one on the um, buttons on the uh, Russian calculator, but they're still pretty awful. I don't know if he will power up. Oh no, he's powering up. He's working. Good. This one's a bit janky to get to power up sometimes. Because of its beautiful Sinclair quality. So, I think we should pull out these chips and have a look at them. Um, I'm not entirely sure what that mark is differentiating. Oh, they come out of the socket super easy. He's out that side, we've just got to get him out this side now. There we go, this is the first one out. These are very thin, fragile pins. But hopefully the camera will focus on it, and yes it does. Moss Semiconductor. MCS2525. The other one is an MCS252. Six is that, or is that a five? Yeah, it's a six on the end. So, yeah, they are a chipset. Quite nice looking chips, actually. They're a bit like the um, arithmetic logic unit, actually, that I have in my. Um, collection of vintage chips. Oh good at that one then. Let's pop this one out just for the hell of it. I know it's super live tear down, isn't it? Nothing under there, so this one looks like it's scanning the keyboards. Oh well, it is scanning the keyboards. Then I'm guessing the other one will be more sort of logic and display driver type thing. Yeah, same sort of thing. So we pop him back in his socket. Oh, socketed, which is the first time I've actually seen socketed chips in the calculator. Even my uh, Nixie calculator doesn't have that. So here's our two power inputs. So I think what we should do is wire some wires to them. And while the soldering iron heats up, I will wet the sponge a bit more. God, solder needs clearing out of there. I had dinner not too long ago. It was gammon snake. Gammon, gammon snakes, yes, I ate gammon snakes. Have you ever heard of gammon snakes? I'm sure you have, it's a very common dish. Yeah, gammon steaks. <laughs> gammon snakes. Oh dear. So this will be a good indication to whether it works. We've got some battery corrosion, unfortunately, on the circuit board. Which is always unfortunate on this kind of stuff. So we will... Find one that isn't rock hard like it's being used as a wank rag. Take six volts, which will be if we um. Yeah, yeah, I know that that tape is not going to be um. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is as I expected. Ew, look at that. That's horrible. It's all filled with gunge and horrible, evil nightcadness. Yeah, stick a vote in the comments if you want to see these in a microwave. We can make that happen now. Because we have a scrap microwave that works that was like absolutely disgusting when I found it. So, perfect candidate for. Um, microwaving things that shouldn't be microwaved, and it has been tested out. Much. My brother wasn't overly impressed when I showed it to him. Hmm. Might need to use a bit of extra flux in there. And this is why, children, you always want to have some flux. Doesn't matter in what form. I've had this flux for years. I've had it since my teenage years, in fact. Came with my first soldering iron that my mum picked up from... Um, Wilkinson's, back when Wilkinson's was a thing. They're now a defunct company. Was it Mum who brought it or was it me? I don't remember. Part of these traps will actually accept solder. This is what I mean about what the positive terminal does to the um, two traces. It just makes it so they don't accept solder. And if I can't get these to accept solder of any kind, how the hell am I going to test this thing? God, it's all under the... Oh, God, battery crowd. Ah, oh, let's try the old classic. Where's my uh, Swiss Army knife? Here he is. I might paint him red. In fact, we can do that. Solder to now, and boom! That's what you do. You got a trace or something that's uh, had that happen to it. That one's positive. This one's negative. If I get it the wrong way around, I will kill this thing. I will make those pretty chips go up in smoke. And this is just a testing phase. This isn't even the repair phase. We're not. We haven't done. It. We're not doing anything to it yet. Good. We successfully got it to take solder. So now we can cut two leads, both uninsulated, because well. It's just the wire that's available to me in front of me. Oh, our boy racers are out on their little dirt bikes. They live down, they live literally at the end of the road. You hear them weird doing their loops around the neighbourhood. On their little dirt bike. They actually have something to do with the shouty Chav family at the end of the road. They were very shouty all the time. It gets kind of a bit annoying. It's like, do you have to shout all the time, please? But what are you going to do? You 
just kind of deal with it. I just enjoyed having the skin burned off my fingers there. It was very pleasant. You were the end I saw, but weren't you? Yes, you were. Right. This is why you want to try and uh, gain yourself asbestos fingers that can take the heat of the soldering iron. Big Clive has asbestos fingers. I'm slowly gaining asbestos fingers. As demonstrated here, being able to hold on to a wire. Right, I need to knock that down to a voltage that won't nuke the circuit board. So in comes the flute. As you can see, I have a very tidy workbench. It's totally not cluttered up with all sorts of random shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the calculator... Yeah, believe it or not, there's a calculator under that, more specifically. My, um... Very nice, um, 7 seg Nixie calculator as I call it. Who's buried under all that shit. Alright, we need the probes. Over they come from the power supply. I know, this is such fun, isn't it? We get to find out how badly fucked the display is, because I suspect it's a little on the fucked side. So we make sure we hook it up to the, um, I don't want to do what I did with that Toshiba and put, swap the 12 volt with the um, 5 volt. That made a very unhappy computer. So 15 volts on this is 12 volts on here because that display is absolutely useless. So we want 6 volts and that is almost there. Bang on! Bang on six! Or 770 there. So we turn him off. Short him out. So it discharges any capacitors. And then we need to. So he is. I've lost track who's positive and who's negative. Shit. <laughs> ah, shit. Because that was attached to this at one point. Um... There are a few little tips and tricks we can do to figure out the negative and the positive. You're positive. I'm getting mixed messages here. I'm going to go with the outside as the negative. If we nuke it, we nuke it. Wish me luck. I think it is. Yeah, it is. 
Right, so we need you to stop getting hooked around the thing there. We need you to just sit there and we need you on on oh hello 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 we have life two Oh my god, he is routinely rooted. This is worse than I was thinking. Oh, we're not even getting anything on the screen now. So yeah, this calculator is a bit on the um, completely utter balked side. Oh, jeez. Well, uh, let's get a better look at the display. Where's my torch? It was over here somewhere. Where is it hiding? I don't know where my torch is hiding, but yeah. That's not a good sign, is it, my friends? We can hit pie. Oh my god, we got something with pie! You can't tell what the hell it is. But yeah, you can see several of those LED segments are rooted. Okay, so pie works. I think it might just be a case the keypad doesn't fully work and the display is a bit balked. But Pi works apparently, or it did. Oh, we've got Pi working again. Yeah, that doesn't look a lot like 3.1415 ETC go on, go on and go on. Lovely display though, but completely and utterly, yeah. There we go, so bring it closer to you. Mm. So you can see what it is, but yeah, it looks like very much battery grot has gotten into this and um, nuked it, to say the least, which is a shame. So yeah, we've got battery uh, corrosion damage, so shall we take it apart further and have a further look and survey the damage? I think we should. Everyone cheered in agreement. Don't forget to unscrew the power connector. So if we pull over to the other side, you can see there's a lot of um, battery damage on this part of the PCB. You can also see they've labelled out the connectors for the array scanning, which is quite cool. But if you look at the display, you can see under the light... that there does seem to be uh, evidence of battery grot getting in there. Which pretty much means those segments are dead. So this unfortunately is as I'm suspecting, bringing up and testing, testing a bit of um, uh, a dead end. We've come across the first calculator we can't restore. Which isn't too bad, because certainly I brought quite a lot of them. I've come across more vintage computers in an unrepairable state than I have um, calculators, I must admit. Because good luck getting a hold of a new display. And also these are MOS semiconductors. And um, MOS semiconductors aren't the most reliable things on Earth. Just look at the problems with the um, Commodore PLA in that.
I would not be surprised if one of these chips has gone bad as well. And bearing in mind their like custom calculator ASICs from the 1970s, good luck finding more. Good luck finding replacements. So this one looks like he's going to very much be a shelf queen. But I do want to have a look under this keypad because we've got several solder points which fascinates me. What is soldered on on the other side? And plus of all, we're actually a video showing the internals of one of these calculators, which I have not found anywhere else online, so... There's that, and there's timing out, which could well be a label for a problem that was highlighted and stuck in there by someone who was attempting to repair it at one point in the past and failed. So hopefully we don't make all the buttons fall out because I have to look up online how to get them all back in. And I'd rather do it all in the video. Right, where's my screwdriver? Here it is. Buried under some gump over there. So yeah, we got we got we got a failed one! We got one that's not recoverable. Ah that's a shame. Bit of a disappointment, but it's a gamble when you buy something untested on eBay. And you know, out of um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Seventeen, yeah, about seventeen vintage calculators I own. Um, eighteen. Um, we can actually calculate the percentage of that failure rate. So if we've got um. I uh. 18 calculators enter and we've had one fail then our percentage will be I did that wrong 18 enter one fails a 5.55555 and eventually a 6 percent failure rate which is actually pretty decent I'm quite happy with that you know that's actually a pretty decent failure rate and this one will have its own video soon but we won't need to do a repair so it can be done on a nicer uh, fancy camera or also known as a shitty Sony camera but I got it for free so I ain't complaining I got it broken I fixed it. All what it needed was a little motor inside because the um, shutter motors on them, uh, it's a known problem, the shutter motor wears out. The only thing is, is you've got to take apart the whole camera to get to it. The lens assembly, the sensor assembly, the whole thing. The only assembly you don't have to take apart is the part that the... Um, Lenses are attached to. Oh, naughty screw. He tried escaping. Naughty, naughty. I think we'll have a bath after this. I do like a nice bath. Then maybe we'll play some Call of Duty with my brother later because it's multi platform, so. We can play it together after for so many years of not being able to play online together or against each other. So yeah, I'm not going to bother doing all the um, battery reconditioning and all that. I'm just going to remove those dead batteries. And that's about as far as this one's going because... The display's totaled. You could see that yourselves. There's just no way you can repair those bond wires. 
So, we're at a point we can actually have a look under the keypad. Ha! It's not a membrane! Would you look at that? Well, well, well! They actually spring down onto the thing and surprise, surprise, there's battery grot on there and if we pull out one of the buttons or the springs. Oh god, it's dirty in here. So, um, we might actually be able to get it responding to the buttons. Oh, that's because this isn't a proper through hole PC. That's what the solder points are, they're to make it through hole. To make the um, things go through to the other side. Who'd have thought? And oh, we've got to test out the buttons now. So yeah, interesting. It basically uh, puts these down, which are obviously conductive. Yeah, they're those rubberized pads. No, don't stick to the screwdriver just because it's magnetized. So what do the buttons look like? This is going to be a risky operation. If we can get one of the buttons to come out. It's just got to not disturb the other like nine trillion buttons in there. So that's the equals key, and this is also rubberized. So if we pull this out, yeah, the opposite way of how it's normally done. I mean, it does comply with the whole rubberized. It's almost like a modern day uh, membrane, but uh, with a little of its own unique twist on it. I love these little springs. That's one thing that's the, to love about these vintage calculators is just the unique solutions to solve problems that have since been solved in that have since been solved. I love the read switch solution to the uh, key switches. I mean, let's be honest, you're not going to get loads of troubles with reed switches because they're fully sealed units. They do fail, but it's not as common. I came across one vintage calculator restoration where a reed switch had failed. So it does happen. Bear with me while I have a drink because I'm thirsty. know what you think of the two camera setup. So yes, now we've got to power this up. So now we've got a thousand little tiny keyboard screws to screw in. You are all going to watch and love it. We could, we could have the um, screwing in times compiled with Simon's gr Chicago Grinder Stories. Doesn't that sound like fun? Suddenly I hear loads of people in the audience going, Bleh. Needless to say, much fun is had. And I'm very disappointed it's not happening this year. I won't get that week of the year where I can just let myself go and go full greasy. Quite funny, actually. Just like someone uh, commented in my video, and it's just like, "Oh, you, 
You swore so many times you'd, you'd struggle getting monetization. Exactly, so why bother? Because I really don't care, you know. It's my platform at the end of the day, and I say what I like, basically. Oh god, I'm hungry again, even though I had two gammon steaks. That obviously wasn't enough, I need like 5,000 gammon steaks to be satisfied. Makes me wonder if I've got some sort of eating disorder or I'm always hungry. It's like anorexia, but just the opposite. I mean, anorexia isn't lack of hunger, it's um, more the uh, feeling you're fat, so feeling like you're fat when like you're not, and you're basically starving yourself to death. And if you have anorexia, please speak to someone, go to a psychologist. It's less common in men, but it's very more common in uh, females for some strange reason I don't understand. It's like the autism thing, it's like it's very, it's not very often detected in women. You know, women can go for years without anyone knowing there's um, so, something going on between masks. So look at that, proper bodge. Resist the wire goes round. I wonder if that's a factory bodge straight onto that trace. Nice thing is, is we've got some um, data there. VSS, VDD, VSS, VBB. Oh, these are some terms you don't see much these days. Because these old chips generally like to use like a bazillion different weird voltages. Which makes them a real pain in the arse to run. So, oh god, now we've got, now we've got to get this in. God, here we go. I was pushing so hard it made me fart. <laughs> Seriously? There we go. Yep, that's up against the display. Awesome. Mm. My fingers smell of battery acid. Or alkaline or whatever. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> the um, cremated uh, belts are making one hell of a mess. Uh, yeah, I need to edit that video. I have a week off, so I've got time to do it. Right, you're positive, you're negative. Let's move the HP calculator out of the way so he can go there. Oh man, it's disappointing. I this can't. This is um, not fixable due to parts being damaged that are basically unreplaceable or irreplaceable or whatever. Okay, on. Woo! Look at that. We have a full display. Buttons still don't work. Oh my god, Pi isn't even working now. Oh, we can make it sort of flicker out that one. Yeah. My guess is not only is the display balked, but the actual logic ICs are balked. Because if the ICs were doing something, we would get something out of it. So yeah, I think we're going to conclude this video here. That This one is just a lost cause and just going to be a shelf queen. Sometimes you have to know when to take a loss. It didn't cost much though, it was another like cheap one so you know you win some you lose some literally so we'll leave the cables in in case we decide to revisit we might even part him out you never do know we'll see
What do you guys think this should be? Do you think Shelf Queen? Do you think we should part it out to restore other vintage calculators? Well, put it this way. If another vintage calculator comes along and uses the same parts as this, and parts from this one can fix it, I'm totally doing that. But, yeah. Uh, shall I show you my ALU? I think I should. Where's processors? There we go. Here we go. We have a Commodore processor. But if we go under here, we have our arithmetic logic unit. Which is the white ceramic one. That looks a bit like the Commodore chips. Has um less pins though. It has a whole four less pins. Yeah, there's stuff for the uh, Acorn Electron and whatnot in there and Whatever this wonderful beast is. These are all like logic ICs from a microprocessor. This is actually a memory controller, if I remember correctly. And then we have... This one you'll like. We have a Commodore CPU, because it was uh, for the Plus 4. And then we have a um, 8085. We have a Z80. And we have the Z80 um, low power clone, the NSC 800N. Someone did a teardown where they uh, came across one of those uh, eight, those uh, Z80 low power CMOS chips. I made sure to highlight what it was to them. Oh, that's right. It's uh, the uh, Marvin 69 guy. That's it. Um. I'm not sure where he's from. I think somewhere in Eastern Europe. But he gets hold of loads of really cool military stir plus stuff for teardowns and yeah, absolutely awesome shit he gets hold of and takes apart like missile guidance systems and stuff. The sort of stuff I have white dreams about. Infrared guidance systems and the sort of stuff I would very happily play with. And somehow he resists taking those uh, infrared guidance systems completely apart. Whereas me, it'd be like, no, that that has to come completely apart. We have to know what the sensor looks like. Well, another windy pops. Because those old missiles are actually fully analog as well, which makes it even more amazing. Where you get some of them where they're actually uh, their computer is basically a bunch of valves. So there's some really really funky. Crazy logic, I'd love to understand how it works. So for now, this one is a shelf queen. And is our first dead calculator. But we do have more on the way. And I abide all of those of you who came along for the ride, and thanks for watching.